And so our sensory organs are completely different and we get overstimulated. And this overstimulation has several um, outcomes. If we are comparing the usage of, say, sodium between a migraineur's brain and the brain of a person who's not a migraineur, you're going to see a migraineur needing about 50% more sodium. And there was a study, this was from 1951, where they looked at migraineurs and they checked their urine sodium Mm -hmm. output compared to other people who were not migraineurs. And they were were actually excreting 50% more sodium from the same diet under the same controlled environmental conditions. So migraineurs use 50% more sodium, therefore they excrete 50% more sodium. So if we use more sodium than somebody who doesn't have migraines, well, what does that mean for the brain and for the body? Something is going to give because we don't have then the nourishment that we're supposed to be having. So what initially starts the migraine is being out of some of these nutrients. It isn't just that the migraine brain has more connections um, between the sensory neurons, um, but that the, there are these voltage dependent or voltage gated channels, pumps, they're all um, modified. Recommend for the viewer to, to visit uh, genecards.org. And uh, genecards.org is basically the human genome Okay. Um, set up. So you can access, you can put in any kind of health condition and hit enter and you're going to get all the genes associated with that particular condition. In the, the first one is called ATP1A2. So what is ATP? That's the ATPase pump. So that's the sodium potassium pump. So that is the one that allows sodium to come into the neurons to generate the action potential. And then sodium leaves and potassium comes back in to create a resting potential. And then there's a refractory period. If this doesn't work, and if there's not enough sodium, well, the next time when the sodium is supposed to come in to start an actual potential, oops, maybe there isn't enough sodium. Maybe the gate or pump can't open. So what happens then? That neuron can't then transmit a message. And so this is the first one. Now let's look at the second one. The second one is SN, uh, SCN1A. That is a, salty, a sodium voltage-gated channel uh, subunit, subunit one. All of these are basically organizing the cell's firing ability. The next one, and this is important for our discussion because we're talking nutrition, SS, SLC1A3, what is that? That is actually a glucose transport, a sodium transport for glucose. It's a solute carrier because we only have one glucose transporter that uses insulin, which is GLUT4, but mm-hmm. GLUT1, 2, 3, uh, and I think there's one more, I forget now which one. These actually use sodium to get glucose into the cells, all associated with either the, channel, the, the neurons channel or not functioning or the carrying of the glucose in or out of the cell. So we have a problem with what I would call channelopathy, and that is actually technically what it is, channelopathy. And so channelopathy, the definition, is caused by um, disrupted functions of the ion channel. So what I have just described are all the ion channels that are disrupted uh, in the migraine brain, which aren't so in a regular brain. annotated, and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.